Hello everyone, we have my dear first ever official mentor, Ellen in the house. Ellen, you want to say hi to our audience in our Grove? Hi, my name is Elin. Um, Ellen. I'm very honored to be invited today by Jen uh, to be speaking here. And um, I did not expect that uh, she considered me as a mentor. And I'm really honored to be here today. Okay, so yeah, you don't consider me as a mentor. Oh, just kidding. Um, yeah, so officially we were in that relationship. I joined Toastmaster. And if anyone here, you are now not in Toastmaster and you want to develop your communication or leadership, great place to join. And I was in Malaysia. After two years of always saying, I am a guest, Finally, I became a member and I was assigned to be mentored by my dear mentor here. And I remember the more memory that stuck with me and I still have it with me, the gratitude card. And that day you, was, you were the MC. So today the topic will be about how can we embrace that light in the darkness how can we embrace the hope the great in the moment maybe we are down or we are in a very difficult time and uh, i think there's nobody going to be better than ellen because she have overcome a very terrible or let's say very heavy disaster uh, can you talk about it because i think maybe you said that it's okay now you can recall that but it was a difficult for people uh, so maybe you can share a little bit so people know the context okay um i first knew jen in the toastmasters meeting uh, and at that time um when i first met her i was uh, quite surprised when she told me that she cycled to work and it was in a free trade zone area what surprises me most was that uh, I don't see anybody cycling in that area and the cars are moving quite fast. So uh, for me, Jen is a very strong and determined lady. Uh, she's a very brave lady. So thank you again for inviting me here today. Now, uh, let me just share a bit uh, of my story. In, uh, in the year 2016, on the 15th of April, there was a gas explosion at my home. And as a result of the gas explosion, I suffered 80% burn on my body, which consists of a second to third degree burn. And it was indeed a very difficult time for me because I was in a coma for two and a half months, in the ICU for four months. And overall, I was only officially discharged from the hospital after one year, three months, and 20 days. And you can imagine, right? Mm, being in a hospital for a long time is not good. And um, now during this uh, COVID-19 period, I'm sure some of you feel that your movement has been restricted. Your freedom has been restricted. So can you imagine uh, when I was in the ICU for four months, I couldn't move at all. And I had to relearn to do everything again. I had to relearn how to move my hands, how to uh, sit, how to stand. And I only managed to stand after nearly seven months after the explosion. And at that time, I could still remember my legs were so painful. It felt like you know blood was coming out from my bandage and my legs actually turned purplish black. And during those uh, dark times, what helped me most was to remember to be grateful for what I still have. Because even though I was in the ICU, I was grateful that I was still alive. If you were to ask the firemen who came that night uh, to my house, they would have told you that 90% of the ground floor was destroyed. There were walls collapsed, 
the front fence of my house collapsed too. And even my neighbor's house were damaged a bit. So there are things for you to be grateful for. And I was thankful that I was still alive, that my parents could visit me every day at the hospital and that my family was still there for me. That is what I feel is important in life. Because uh, without support from people around us, we will not be able to manage to make it through. Thank you so much because you touched on the topic of gratitude and uh, we met each other on the day where I knew about the concept pay it forward and it also has a link with kindness and gratitude and you mentioned the difficult time and then because of focusing on what did you still have at that time and that how you embraced and expanded it overcoming the things that were not like advantages uh, so uh, you mentioned also like we uh, we really want to recall now in this covid time if anyone thinking that uh, we are not in the moment where we can have freedom to go out then yeah you mentioned that if we look at what we have right now we still alive and we still have opportunity to connect with people like virtually like that there's so much more to be grateful for uh, so uh, yeah. how was that like i believe that you said that it was uh, difficult to really talk about it but now i see that a lot of audience from different places have chance to listen to your story so how was that process maybe the people can link with here they probably had the difficult times in their life and they still feel a little bit painful when talking about it. Uh, maybe because of that, they are not still yet be freedom or out of that. So what would be your thoughts or your thinking process on that? Okay, um, when I was at the ICU and the burn ward, every day was very painful. Honestly, it was a painful process every day because uh, I was burned on the skin and the skin took a long time to heal. And every dressing change that they do, you'll be very painful. So, you know, most of the time I'll be screaming, crying. And even at the burn ward also, you, even the toughest men, like in the army or the Navy, they'll be screaming and crying when the dressing change has been done. And I realized that at that point of time, I had to accept the way I was, that I'm no longer the same physically, mentally, emotionally, that I have changed. I feel that that is one of the most important process for a person to go through because we need to acknowledge the present, what is happening right now. So if you keep thinking of the past, of how things were before this incident, it will get you nowhere because you'll be depressed. You keep thinking that, oh, I could do this and that in the past. Now I can't do it anymore. So it is of no use for me at that point of time. And I didn't really want to think too much about the future because if we concentrate on the future, we'll get depressed too because you feel that, oh, I have no future. I may not be able to walk anymore. So the, what I had to concentrate on was the present, what I could do for today, whether I could shift myself to the left or to the right, or just concentrate on exercising, you know, just to get through the day. Sometimes our mind needs to focus on one task at a time and not be too worried or too concerned or too fearful for the future, nor do we, we should not compare ourselves with the past because once when we do that, our mind will keep thinking of the present, not of the past or the future and not of the present. And I feel that the present is the most important thing that a person can concentrate in. 
Wow, powerful. I really like it because you said that how did we, how did you shift the focus on not the thing that already happened, but on what you have right now, right here, and build up that to a better future, not focusing on maybe something that like being hang on by the future, right, or being held by the past, but more like in the here and the now and appreciate at that moment, what did you have? And you talk about the acknowledgement. So how did you later on build up the, let's say, a different life style after that? Well, how was that process? Okay, um, honestly, I just take it one day at a time. If I feel that I can do this now, I will do it, you know? Instead of worrying too much or be concerned that I can't do it. Because sometimes we let fear get a hold mm. on us. And that is um, not a good thing. We need to be able to focus on what we can do now. Because the only time that we have is actually now. So, so uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel that is uh, important because we can make plans in the future, but we do not know what is going to happen to us in the future. We can just die tomorrow. We may not know because of this incident, I begin to realize that we need to take one step at a time, one day at a time. And, mm. you know, maybe you can ask yourself if you were to die next week or next month, or next year, or even tomorrow, what will you do differently? What can you do differently? Because by realizing that we have a limited time on earth, we will prioritize on what is important to us, what matters to us. And what does not matter to us, we can discard it because all of us only have 24 hours in a day. So we need to make use of our time as much as we can. Wow, powerful. I think, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe you didn't know because the time that I was in Malaysia, I think that time also you had the accident. And also the, the year that I left Malaysia. And you talk about how gratitude helped you during that post of overcoming the difficulties. And I also often told the story that I went bankrupt when I changed my career. At that time, I left the job. I think we didn't have a chance to talk before I left. And uh, it was a difficult time where I felt nothing worked because my family used to be proud of me, became very wondering about what was I doing. I, and then I think I shared uh, the story about it in the speech and you were very supportive and you went with me in the second round. But after that, I went bankrupt like mentally. I could not handle it. I felt like nothing working. And I remember the day that I, after three weeks that I, I often cried and woke up in tears that day, I felt like I didn't want to live anymore. It's a very weird feeling. I don't know during the difficult time you had the current kind of moment, but it was like depressed. I was depressed and then I, I felt like life is enough, right? And I went to my favorite coffee shop. Normally I wrote my book and uh, you know, I could not pay for that, but people knew me for years. So they let me go to the second floor it was in the corner. What is the name of the street? I don't remember. But then on that corner, nobody normally sat because it was so bright. The sun directly shine on that. But on that particular day, that, that particular moment where I felt really hopeless, there was a man sitting there. So I felt like collapsed inside, right? Even the seat was not for me. That was my thought. And he suddenly stood up. And he came and said, I normally saw you right there. So if you take that seat, maybe you can write better. So that moment, I, it's like you said, I saw the little light in the end of the tunnel. And from that, it became like brighter, brighter, become like a sky of light 
where I saw all the possibilities and gratitude. And I started writing down all the things that I had. I was able to travel around. I was a little kid before. So I was focusing on the gratitude and all the things that I had, like cover all the things that I thought I didn't have. And uh, yeah, I was being really grateful and that how I got the good state of mind to sew all the things and um, figure the way out to the UK and then turn around what I'm doing in the new career. And every day now is like a journey, like a beginning of the journey. And thinking back about that experience, I knew every day, as you said, is a starting of a journey that I want to be hungry again to learn and to, to discover. It's a really an adventure. So uh, thank you so much because I, uh, I knew you, there was a difficult time for you and I could not really do any kind of thing. And I, but I saw, as you said, how people care about that and everyone went together uh, to cheer you up. And uh, you became like an iron lady. You, you became like a legend in how you bring back your life and inspire other people. Uh, so um, I think I like to call a little bit back to the story about pay it forward because you taught me that. And I think that linked with the gratitude. Uh, so yeah, how did you know about that concept and do you still use it? now in a way and how, how do you do that and why should people actually practice on that okay um i remember the paid forward uh theme that we had in our toastmasters meeting was i think around six years ago six seven years ago yeah around there and um at that point of time i was thinking of a way to have a more meaningful meeting and i was I, and I just recall the movie that I saw paid forward. Mm. And uh, then I started to do some research and I made a bookmark. Do you still have that bookmark or do you give it away? So, yes, that, yeah. no, I, yeah, I so that bookmark, you know, to pay it forward was supposed to be given away to another person. <laughs> It's not for it's not for everyone to keep it because you're supposed to do a good thing for another person and you know give the bookmark. So that that uh that night i was thinking that okay um there'll be like around 20 30 old people so i made around 30 old bookmarks so uh i paid for the dinner that night uh, for the toastmasters meeting if yeah and um i think also the birthday cake if i'm not mistaken and so my aim that night was to inspire others to do good too you know so I gave the bookmark as a reminder for everyone that, you know, uh, do something nice for someone else and then pass that bookmark to that person and that person will keep on continuing doing it. So um, as of now, I do not know whether anyone had done it, but it is okay because I do know that some people may feel shy or maybe have forgotten about it, but it's okay because uh, it's good that I do not have any expectation, but in a way, it is good that you have also remembered and uh, that the pay it forward concept has impacted your life, which I'm also uh, happy and glad about because uh, you are doing it in your own way. And speaking of uh, pay it forward, um, when I was in the burn ward, in the ICU, some of the, my Toastmasters friends actually came to visit to encourage me. And that, in a way, for me, is uh, some sort of paid forward, a form of paid forward. And I received a lot of help from people when in my most darkest time. And that, too, is a form of paid forward. So it's not necessary that um you are directly getting the benefit it can be indirect so it's something like karma too you do good and the good will come back to you so when you're doing good for others just do it do it without expectation and somehow it will come back to you 
that is what I believe. Mm. Even though not from the same person, but from another person. So you don't actually need that bookmark, but perhaps that bookmark can be a reminder to you, Jen, <laughs> to well, take I, forward. Oh my yeah. God, that's interesting. Okay, so it's a ha-ha for me, right? <laughs> so I, I was like keeping that because I, I wanted to remember about what you taught me. And I maybe that belief or that kind of perception was so strong. So I didn't even hear that I should give it to somebody because actually I would, but I would give something else, but that, that one I kept. So the story was, I talked to my friend about, oh, you know, I got this for my mentor and from the meeting, I remember it. And this is one of the most memorable things. And he said, oh, you watched a movie? I said, oh, no, I didn't. Uh, so I didn't know that there was a movie and the movie even ending, not really like a 100% happy ending, let's say in the social norm, but the feeling was so embracing. People knew about how to be nice to one another. And uh, it was inspired by a little boy. And the image of that is like a tree. We, uh, the, the branch of the tree will keep expanding as the kindness is keep, is keep expanding. So uh, yeah, I think I don't give it to somebody, but I uh, think it become a part of my life where I see it everywhere around me. So not only doing it, but observing and appreciate, appreciating the people who are doing it. Uh, so, um, yeah, thank you so much. I, I think one of the things that I never forget. <laughs> but now I know about the really good uh, fact of that. I should give it to someone. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you talk about pay it forward and you, I, I feel like your energy and the, the feeling that I have toward you is still very vibrant and I felt that uh, the time I, we met each other and uh, even though I would say like you're a little bit cold from outside, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, she's a little bit cold. Uh, but I, I always feel like she, with any people like that, they're going to be very caring. And uh, I remember later on, we had a uh, book uh, discussion together and you were always very thoughtful and uh, caring about people, not only if they are your mentor. So can you share about the mentorship? Because I don't think we have very long years of mentoring, but the concept of looking at you as a mentor is always helps me to, to feel like I, I have somebody who believe in me and want to be there. And that is a way to raise the necessity uh, so, for example, if I give a speech, I also think like who's going to be proud of that uh, and you uh, and uh, Michael and Anand. So uh, some people that I learned a lot at the beginning of the journey. Uh, so yeah, can you share about uh, how can people make the best out of the mentorship? Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't really consider myself as a mentor, but thank you for considering me as a mentor. I think all of us are capable of being mentors because uh, what we do in life, we may never know other people may notice us. So whether you choose to fight for life or you give up, someone notices it. Okay, let, let me just share with you one of my story. Um, when I was in the ICU, as I was coming out from the ICU after four months, one of the nurses there came to me and said, you know, I see you struggling to be alive and it gives me hope. And because at that point of time, her mom uh, met with an accident and she said that seeing me at the ICU, just being alive gave her hope for life. And that really touched me. However, unfortunately, her mom passed away. So sometimes, whether we are fighting our own battles, fighting things that is happening around us, sometimes it does help another person. It's just that we do not realize it. Yep. 
just like uh, me today, I, I didn't realize that, you know, how much uh, paid forward had impacted you just by that meeting. It is important that we don't have expectations because what we do now, just let it go after that, you know, whatever, whatever happens, just let it go. As long as you have done your part, as long as your intention is good, that I feel is the most important thing. Wow. Yeah. It's powerful. I love the reputation about paid, uh, like no expectation because it's, I think this is the thing to distinguish between how we feel fulfilled and how we are not. Because if we expect to get it and think about it, we are normally will have the gap between the things that we receive and the reality. And that gap of the outcomes and what we expect normally lead to disappointment and negative feeling. And as you said that we have that intention and we do it, we give, we call it give joyfully and, and unconditionally, and then we just continue doing it. And that is how we expanding that kindness. So how can we practice that one of living and giving our best without expectation because I think as an automated process we have built over time it's quite easy for us to really do something and then oh it's gonna need to be like that and we hold on on that expectation I think it's more on uh, how we are brought up and our bad habits you mm. know societal expectation parental expectation you know people around us they expect things from us mm. and that somehow will affect us too we also expect from others but i learned that if we do not have any expectation at all if we give from the heart it will just flow you know how can we do that like how can people really practice on that because that is actually as you said a habit right which mm. means it can be built and it can be also broken and replaced so what is that process or how was that process that you did to really transit to the giving and no expecting from what we're going to get? Yeah. Honestly, I'm still learning in the process. I'm still learning, honestly. I'm just another human being. I'm still learning. But I do know of people, of uh, really, really good people in this world who actually keep on giving and giving. And they do not have any expectations in return. Sometimes you need to ask yourself, why am I giving it? Is it truly from my heart? Or am I giving it something to get something back? So when we just give without any expectation at all, we would, how do you say? We would not feel any burden. You know, mm. not there are no like life. no gap yeah. in the expectation and the reality. So normally yeah. the disappointment comes from the differences between what yeah. we and then That's what we get. Uh, so yeah, I uh, I cannot emphasize enough on how wonderful it is when you you really set a great example on that and uh, for sure that we're gonna keep continuing practicing on all these kind of good habits because maybe we meet another situation that, that maybe we expect but then we know we learn uh, and i also recall to why my uh, unconditional love for my family has a powerful very power great power to really live up me and I believe maybe a lot of people have felt that the unconditional love from somebody is just like a great source of empowerment. So uh, we will link back to if we do something without that kind of expectation and give like uh, joyfully and unconditionally, it also bring that power to someone in the like let's say very authentic way and the complete way rather than half half the energy half is to give half is to think about what to get back uh, so yeah i believe that it is 10 p.m your time and uh, i uh, can i just add a bit of something 
Oh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. I don't end yet. I yeah. will another question. I think we should acknowledge our own feelings too. I mean, if we give something, then we feel, oh, you know, I feel hurt by giving. You know, <laughs> then you should ask yourself, why are you feeling hurtful by giving it? You know? Oh, yeah, that, that one is yeah. really... People go so are you expecting? Are you fishing for? Are you actually fishing for compliments? Yeah. Are you expecting? Yeah. Ha, yeah. So it's like and it's not a good, like not a good way of doing. Yeah. The word sacrificing is, I think, is create the energy that burden in a way because mm. I think that we lose something because of someone. But it, that's why it is not a great place to start. Uh, so uh, yeah, very nice that when you talk about the chicken, can you give a specific example so people can relate? Yeah, I mean like, um, okay, you do a favor for someone because that someone helped us for it. But are you feeling a sense of resentment? You know, because actually we need to notice our emotions, what emotions are coming out from us. Mm. So if you are feeling resentment, why? You need to ask yourself this. Why, are you, why am I feeling resentment? I have already given help to that person. That person asked for it. But why do I feel resentment? Maybe you feel that, oh, he's taking a lot of my time. So you're having that resentment issue. Hmm. But if you really want to help, then help. Why do you still need to have that resentment? I mean, yeah, we do. We as humans, we have all sorts of of emotions that comes to us all the time. But sometimes you need to question, why am I feeling this way? So if you really didn't want to help in the first place, then you should have said something about it, right? So it's, it, it, it is a process. Honestly, it is a process because most of us, we don't acknowledge our own emotions. We don't acknowledge our own feelings or we tend to suppress it. And this is actually detrimental in the long run. So, mm -hmm. So we need to actually acknowledge ourselves and see what emotions that come about and ask ourselves, why am I feeling this way? I mm. think that would help. Wow. So uh, to kind of scrap up the acknowledge of our feeling and our thought and also acknowledge of what we have right now, right here and acknowledge of the habit that we have right now, then focusing on what we have to be grateful about it and do the things that we can do right now, right here. And I think you have set a great example on it. And I just want to recall that you never know your stories and the care that you give can impact somebody's life in the way that you never imagined. And you have done it to me, but I believe that I didn't express enough. So you didn't feel that. But uh, as I shared at the beginning, the mentorship sometimes doesn't need to be, we often talk. It can start, a, it can get started like, how did we start? And then it lasted. It keeps con continuing lasting. I just think about you and your story. And I think that is a mentorship on how to keep continuing in life. Uh, so how, what is the hope that you have for the coming years? I know that we don't hang on the future, but I, I can see that you have that kind of positive position toward life. Uh, so how do you envision that? And maybe we can relate to the audience here. I know everyone now may be in a bit scary of the chaotic situation. So uh, how, how can people embrace that brighter Next day, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm actually writing my book. So hopefully I will be able to finish it by the end of the year. Hopefully, hopefully. And, no, uh, okay. you want to do it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to finish it. Okay. <laughs> so concentrate on what you want to do, plan on what you want to do. Yes, we may die tomorrow, but we still need to do the planning. We still need to do the hard work. So if you really want something, do it. Yeah, just do it. Mm, okay, so uh, normally it's uh, easier to say than do. But um, the my, my battery is going off already. So, you need yeah. to, so uh, I, yeah. I think it's the perfect time to end. The battery says that end. 
Ellen needs to take a rest and everyone may be also going to take a rest, but I think you touched on the topic that I think it has saved my life. And you said it saved your life too, which is gratitude. Uh, so this is a big gratitude toward you. You have been so patient to make it happen. And uh, we will bring you back one more day on the day that you launch your book. Okay. Uh, so that will be a promise from you. I will interview you on the day you. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you so Bye. much. Wonderful night.